Hello everybody. This video is going to be a tutorial on how to make a digital story in iMovie. Just some of the basics. So here I am in iMovie and the first thing I'm going to do is create a new movie. So I hit this new button here. Movie. And I'm going to select no theme. There are some cool things you can do with the themes but for our purposes we're keeping a simple digital story. We do not want one of these themes. Title it digital story or whatever you want to title it. Okay, so here we have it. Now this timeline right here is where we're going to put our media. Uh, I have already imported some photos here and you can do that via this button here, import and find them and that'll put them in your library here. Uh, but for me, I'm actually going to um, show you how to drag and drop them into the timeline from a folder or on your desktop or something. So I made a folder on my desktop here, digital story, and I've got some images that I got off the internet and downloaded and I'm just going to put them in here. For you, you might be taking photos, you might be scanning some images or getting them from somewhere else. Uh, whatever your method, you want to just drag them in and that's a nice feature of iMovie is you can just drag them right in here. Now we have the images in our timeline. The, one of the first things I'm going to do is show you how to rearrange them. So they might be in alphabetical order or some random order and we want to rearrange them. So I would just click on an image and you see it's highlighted in yellow and I'm going to now drag it over here. All right. I want uh, this one to go over here and yeah, I think the rest is actually pretty good. So my digital story is involving He-Man, uh, who is one of my favorite heroes from my childhood uh, cartoon I used to watch. So um, now the next thing that you'll notice is how it's zooming in and out by default. If I hit play here, spacebar is play and pause, and that's a handy button. So I hit play. You notice it's zooming in and out, and I might not want that. Sometimes by default it zooms into a place where you, you know it doesn't make sense for the story you're trying to tell. And so what you can do here is go up to this blue square up here for cropping, and I'm going to hit uh, for my first image. I'm going to do fit. By default right now it's Ken Burns. I don't want that. I just want to fit. I want to see the whole image. Okay. Now in this one right here, maybe I do want to zoom in a little bit on uh, He-Man or on the sword. Let's say yeah, on the sword. Okay. So um, I would hit that button again and I'm going to zoom in. Okay. That's the start. The start I want it to be completely wide and the end I want it to zoom in on the sword. And so I'll just move it down a little bit, kind of subtly, not not fully taking up the whole screen. But there we go. Okay, so I'm zooming in on the sword so we can see how that looks here. All right, good. And now this one, we'll, we'll start with the sword and go out to his face, his look of shock or something. Um, or maybe maybe he's in pain, I don't know. <laughs> So, okay, whoops, we want to start with the sword here, and then we're going to end right there. All right. This one we'll just keep as is, and we'll keep the rest of them um, just fit. Okay, there we go. So if we play this now, uh, we can see how it will look. And by default, each one of these is four seconds, but we will be shortening or extending them. All right, next I'm going to show you how to actually record voice along with it. I'm using a USB microphone, but what you would want to do is click on this microphone right here, no matter what kind of microphone you're using, and then you click on these little lines here so that you can select uh, the correct microphone. Uh, you might be using your built-in microphone, but a USB microphone often gives you a little better sound quality than the built-in. So I've got that. I make sure that my volume is not at zero. It's near 100%. That's good. Mute project will just mute the uh, any other audio that's going on So while you're recording. All right. So now I can start recording here. I don't have a script, but you want to make sure you have some sort of script so that you're planned ahead and ready to go. And I'll hit record. He-Man was a powerful man who 
was a master of the universe and fought against the forces of evil. Okay, now I've just recorded one little bit. You can record it all in one shot if you want to, uh, but I might recommend doing it clip by clip, image by image, or page by page if you're using a book. And so now what I do is I just take this image and I'm going to drag it. If that's the audio I want with that image, I just drag it there, and there we have it. All right, so now my audio is lined up with the image. If I want to click on this one, I can record some voiceover with that as well. I want to make sure I'm selected at the beginning of the image here. And now I hit record again. Much of He-Man's power was derived from the Sword of Grey Skull, which was bestowed to him. All right, and once again, I drag that out to match my audio. And for me, my big space bar click when I stop recording, <laughs> I can get rid of that. And I can get rid of that here too, actually, by just dragging the audio. And you can trim the audio a little bit. And by that, you just drag the edge. There we go. Get the image to match it. OK, good enough. We'll call it good for now for the recording. We would obviously want to record more audio with the other images. But um, a couple other things that you can do here, things to keep in mind, you can add transitions. So I recommend choosing something pretty simple, like cross blur or cross dissolve, uh, just to keep it simple. Uh, you don't want your transitions to be distracting, just like if you were making a PowerPoint or a slides presentation. You don't want it to be too distracting. So I recommend just using, we'll use Cross Dissolve, and we'll just insert that in between our images here. So yeah, we'll just keep on doing that in between each image. And cross Dissolve, and now we get a little there you go, see? Okay. So just so you know, you can also drag around the audio a little bit if you want actually say, whoops, I recorded the wrong place. I'm going to drag this over here with this image instead. And um, you can you know, keep moving things around. You can trim things. The way that you trim things is if you want to get rid of some audio, uh, you would click on the audio itself, make sure the audio is highlighted, not the image. And then you can right click and split clip or you can hit command B. So if I hit command B there, now that audio is split and I can get rid of that part just by hitting uh, delete. All right, so hopefully you'll be able to record one image's worth just fine, but if you need to trim those even, you, you can. Another thing I forgot to mention is that you can adjust the volume of the clips. And what I recommend doing is kind of putting your volume, your overall uh, computer volume, about halfway and just listening to it and seeing how it sounds. And if it, um, you know, if you have your volume on your computer all the way up and uh, it's still hard to hear, you probably want to, uh, you know, lift that up a little bit. And you can do that by dragging this up right here or you can get a little more precise because this is kind of jumpy by clicking on your audio clip like that and then clicking this volume right here and you can get a little more precise with that slider there. You can do it all at once if you hit uh, click on one then hit shift you can select all the audio and um, then I can do it consistently or you can do it bit by bit as you need. Alright lastly we're going to finalize our product. Let's say we're all finished with it uh, the next thing we want to do, the last thing, if it sounds good, it looks all good, we're going to want to share it. So I hit this share button up here, and I'm going to hit file. This file I am going to upload to YouTube. Now you could go directly to YouTube, but I sometimes have trouble with that. And I'm just going to, I have high selected, that's good. ProRes, it usually don't need, it's just going to make it slightly better quality, but it's going to take up a lot more space and um, just going to take a lot longer to render. So I hit next here, and I'll just call it Digital Story. Digital Story. And it should now be working to save it. And what you'll notice is this little wheel right here 
um, is making progress in that. So you can see exporting digital story. Now this can take quite a while depending on um, your, your movie. Uh, sometimes it can take a good 10, 15, 20 minutes. So I would recommend not starting that in the middle of class, uh, or rather at the end of class, but um, you know, start at a time when you can just leave your computer sit and finish that. Uh, when it is done exporting, you should be able to find it in your finder under uh, movies here. Okay, so that's where you'll you'll click to find it. Most likely, that's the default save place. And then once you have it saved in movies, if you want to upload it to YouTube. When I'm logged into my school Gmail account, I uh, am able to go to YouTube and it'll be my, my school Gmail, my at GR Christian Gmail, and I can either drag this from movies, so if I hit show I can you know, see it in the finder and just drag it right in here, or I can go select files, <clears throat> and in my finder I can uh, go to movies and then I can hit open and that will begin the upload process. Now, this is another thing you might want to do when uh, you actually have some time to let it sit there and upload, because depending on your um, internet speed, that can take you know a good uh, 30 minutes, depending on your uh, internet speed. At school, hopefully, it will go faster than that. So that is the basics of how to make a digital story in iMovie. Let me know if you have any questions.